Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a game in Unity and welcome to episode 46. In this episode we are going to cover a little bit more on our chest, we are going to have some UI on our screen which when we open it says you collected let's say 10 coins maybe. So we'll work the mechanic into that and we're also going to create a credit scene. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to stay up to date with everything on the channel including this series. And with that, let's get to work. So this chest, remember, we have this trigger here. We need to modify this trigger now to include some extra UI. So let's create the UI before we go any further. So game object, UI, we'll have text, we'll just have it on screen, fade in, stay there, fade out. So let's have a, yes, we'll keep it center. Zero out the position. Let's have it a little bit bigger. So let's have it as maybe 30. I'm going to have it white as well so we can see it a little bit better on the background. And I think we're going to need to resize the box. We all know how uh, UI elements work at this point, don't we? we? We don't really need to go into too much detail. So I'm going to just stretch it out about there, get it roughly center. And alignment middle and we'll have it just say um, you collected 10 coins obviously that's a little bit too small box but there we go perfect in the center somewhere I'll get there there we go so we want that to appear but I want it to fade as well so we're going to use a, a fading just you know a couple of things here to get this looking a little bit more authentic uh, let's rename it first and just have uh, chest text and then let's go to our animation and by default let's have the alpha down to zero and then let's click on animation click create and chest text anim and what we'll do is we'll press record and we'll fade in over half a second so we'll go to frame 30 after we set the first keyframe then we'll have it in there for a couple of seconds and then we'll fade out for another half a second. So the keyframe, it's all going to be done via alpha. So let's reset our alpha to 255 and then back to zero. So as we set that first keyframe, remember? Then the 30th frame, we need to set the alpha as 255. And let's have this display for three seconds maybe, which is going to be 60, 120, 180 second, uh, frames on top of our 30, so that's 210. So by the 210th frame, we still want the alpha to be 255. So let's type 255 again. And then by the 240th frame, we need the alpha to be zero, so as it fades off screen. 240, let's set alpha to zero. And then we can stop the recording. And we can turn the, if I can find it again, <laughs> chest text, untick loop time. And then finally, last thing we do, chest text, let's turn off. So now what we need to do is we need to go to our chest trigger right there. Chest opening. So let's open it up in Visual Studio. And we're going to add that as the variable. So public game object and we'll have chest text semicolon which means when we've opened it what we can do is wait mm, about a second is that how long we took to open it yeah we'll wait about a second and then we'll have that come up on screen so in order to do so we need to start an i enumerator and we'll call it chest text open close bracket open curly bracket and we will yield return new wait for seconds and i said one second after that we will set that as active chest text dot set active true semicolon and then we wait for another three and a half seconds or is it it's gonna be four seconds isn't it because we have the text for three seconds and then two half seconds where it fades so yield return new wait for seconds 
for semicolon and then chest text dot set active false. So at this point that will work. We just need to add in that chest text variable. However, in doing all this, we actually do need to add our coins. And if we remember quite some time ago now, we had global coins, I think it is. Uh, it's here somewhere. Uh, coins somewhere. I know you're here somewhere. What we can do, if I can remember what the script was called, might be an inventory. No, nope, it's not an inventory. Shops, global cash, that's the one. So what we need to do is reference global cash. So as that text comes on, let's have global cash dot current coins plus equals 10 semicolon and save. So yes, at this point, we've realized that is exactly what we're doing. Now, one more thing to note here is that we can actually reactivate this over and over and over and over. So the final thing we actually need to do is disable the actual box collider of this object. And I think that's probably best if we do it right before we play the animation. So we'll go chest. Uh, in fact, we'll just do this object, won't we? Because this object itself here refers to, well, obviously the chest trigger right there. So we can have this object dot get component spiky brackets box collider open close bracket dot um, enabled equals false semicolon and save. And let's head back to Unity. So once again you can see the sequencing going on here and the sequence of events that we've created to open the chest, wait, display the text, take the coins and turn the trigger off. You can see exactly how that's working here. So let's add our chest text here and I'm going to save the scene. Now when we press play, let's press our inventory button so we can just check we have 100 coins up here. Let's turn that off. Where am I? And now, let's open I need the treasure to find a way out of this wood. Okay, so it didn't want to play. Oh, I know why. I made a little schoolboy error. We wrote the uh, method here, but we didn't start it, did we? Huh. We have to actually <laughs> start it. So start, co, routine, and in brackets, the name of the I enumerate that we had was chest text. Oh, close bracket close bracket semicolon and save and there we go so that's the reason why that didn't work jimmy forgot to add in start coroutine now we have it now we can press play and now we can see this in action correctly so remember press i yep we have 100 coins let's open up where am i i Expected need 100 to find coins. a way out of this wood uh, 10 coins i wish it was 100 and there we go and our inventory shows 110 so you can see the process here of how we've we made something quite a number of tutorials ago and we can still link to it quite easily. That is the whole idea of these global scripts and I use them quite a lot because I find them very, very useful. So let's move on to a credit scene. Now I've done quite a few different credit scenes uh, in multiple series I've done here. I'm going to do this one a little bit differently just because I like to do things differently all the time to give as much knowledge as possible. So. What we'll do is file, new scene. And I'm going to start with a standard uh, raw image. We'll have that there. And let's stretch it and black all the way. So zero, 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 zero. So that's our canvas all set black. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, uh, well, I'm going to have, uh, let me think. Trying to think of a good way of doing this. How about films where we have, for example, executive producer fades in, fades out, and then the credits roll? Let's try that. So UI, text, and we'll have this as 34. I'm going to have it white. I'm going to have it bold and italic. Stretch it. I'm going to say executive 
producer. Uh, we'll have it align to center, bring it into the middle. And obviously, I'm the executive producer, so I'm going to hold control, press D, bring that down to there, turn it to normal, shrink the size to just a little bit smaller, 32, and Jimmy Vegas. Now what I'm going to do is group these two together. So in the canvas, right click, create empty, and take both of these into there. And now what we do is we're going to have a sequence of events once again. So this is going to go and disappear first off. So let's rename, have exec text. So the next thing I'm going to do is have some scrolling credits when that's disappeared. So game object, UI, text. I'm going to have the text all the way down here off screen. Uh, I'm going to have it white again. And obviously we need to stretch the size of this because there's going to be quite a few credits here. Well, there should be quite a few credits in any normal game. So we'll start with programmer. Uh, let's have that. And we'll say Jimmy Vegas. Uh, designer. Let's do that again. Just, you know, you can do this however you want. I guess that's, you know, it's entirely up to you because it's your game, not my game. So I'm just going to stay consistent. Uh, Tony Versace. I don't know. <laughs> just making stuff up here. Artists. Let's have Carl. Carlson. I'm sure that's from The Simpsons. Um, ben Benson. Tom Thompson. Uh, special thanks. Rick. Ricky. Uh, Mrs. Vegas. And we'll have, I don't know dedicated to uh, I don't know Jimmy Vegas Jr. Why not? Uh, let's make this text a little bit bigger than 14 so let's have it as 20 and uh, let's have center again so hopefully you should be able to see what we're going to do here this is going to be our credit so we will rename credit text uh, next thing we'll do is we will animate it. So let's go to our animations folder, click on animation tab, select our credit text and click on create. And we'll have credit anim. And all we're going to do when we press record is we'll set this keyframe down here. So position, we'll actually start the position on the bottom center. So we need to make sure that is the case. So it always sets it down here. Now there's our keyframe. So what we need to do over the course of, let's say, 20 seconds, we want it to go all the way up here. So 60 frames a second. So that's, what's that? 10 seconds would be 600. So 20 seconds would be 1,200. So by the 1,200 frame, we want this to be top of the screen about there. And once that's done, we can stop the recording. So at this point, if we press play, we should see our credits start scrolling. There we go. And now what we need to do is actually set that sequence of events for our executive producer to appear, disappear, and then the credits scroll. So let's go to our scripts folder and right click, create C sharp script. And we will call this credit script. Open up in Visual Studio. And what we need to do is get rid of void update and get rid of any annotations. We need to keep void start because we'll be having a coroutine in there again, much like we have in the chest opening that I forgot earlier. So let's start with the first variable, which is going to be the executive producer. So public game object uh, exec prod semicolon. And secondly, is going to be the credits. So public game object the credits.
cred. So firstly, we'll start with I enumerator, and we'll call it roll creds, oh, close bracket, open curly bracket. And we will start with basically a whole sequence of what we're doing. So we're going to start with yield, return new, wait for seconds, and we'll wait for half a second, so 0 0.5f, close bracket, semicolon. After that, we'll have exec prod dot set active true because we want it to come on screen. We'll have that flash up for three seconds. So yield return new wait for seconds three semicolon. After that, we can turn it off. So same line of code, just change true to false and then we will set the credit scrolling at the same time because there is a delay between when the credits start and when they appear, which is going to be perfect for this disappearing. So we need to do the cred dot set active true semicolon and save. Now this will play our whole credit, which will be at least somewhat decent, but I think before I do anything, I'm actually going to set the credits uh, just to not loop. So we'll have that there. And now game object, create empty. And let's attach that script we've just written, which is somewhere here. Credit script onto there. And then just set those two variables. So exec text is exec prod. Credit text is the cred. And save. We'll call it splash, uh, not splash screen, it's credit screen, isn't it? Credit scene. And then finally, turn off credit text. And let's press play. So this should last about 20 something seconds. Oh, guess what? Jimmy Vegas strikes again. We forgot the start co routine. <laughs> start co routine. And we had roll creds. Oh, close bracket, close bracket, semicolon, and save. And you are free to just rip into me in the credits for missing two start coroutines in one tutorial. It's a new record. So with that done, we can now press play and we can see everything in action. Perfect. And the credits start rolling. So that's how we do the credits. It's a different way that I usually do it. If you want to check out a couple of different ways, I've got loads of tutorials. I think I've even got a mini tutorial on it, so feel free to check that out if you want to do it that way. And I think next episode, what we're going to take a look at is something which I know a lot of people do struggle a little bit with, but we're going to be doing fog. We're going to be doing fog in a couple of different ways, and we'll experiment with what we can do and how it can have an effect on our atmosphere. So, guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.